1968 Olympic Games 100 meter final. Three Americans, one Cuban, one Jamaican, one Frenchman, one Canadian, one Madagascar. Way to go this time, Jim Hines had a good one and also going well there. Nicola Lewis, Miller, and Miller is going well. And what a finish is it going to be? And Hines comes through. Hines wins his second Charlie Green and look at the time. Before 1968, the 10 second mark was widely considered a barrier for the 100 meters race. But Jim Hines shocked viewers around the world when he clocked 9.95 seconds at the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City. Since then, the world record has come on leaps and bounds, with many of the top male sprinters now having a sub 10 second race under their belt. But a leap from Bolt's 2009 record of 9.58 seconds to sub 9 seconds is no mean feat. According to Polly McGigan and Akisalo, lecturers in sport biomechanics at the University of Bath, the main issue in achieving a sub 9 second race is how much power humans can produce and what the requirements are to achieve this. To produce long steps at a high frequency, athletes must produce a huge amount of force in a very short period of time, approximately 4.5 times their body weight in around 0.1 seconds. To do this, athletes must maintain a very stiff leg and accelerate it into the ground at foot contact, explained Dr. McGigan and Professor Solo in an article for The Conversation. Recent research has shown that it is this difference in the forces generated in the early part of the stance phase that distinguishes very fast sprinters from the less fast ones, they said. The ability to maintain a stiff limb is determined by how muscle force can be generated in the muscles of the leg. This in turn is a function of muscle size, the types of fibers which make up the muscles, and the coordinated activation of the muscles of the leg to optimize the use of elastic mechanisms and amplify the power from the muscles. A muscle with a high proportion of large, fast twitch muscle fibers will be able to generate larger amounts of force more quickly than a muscle with a lower proportion. According to the researchers, a combination of factors would be needed to reach the point at which enough force can be generated quickly enough to produce the required step lengths and frequencies for a sub 9 second race. A combination of genetics and training would need to produce bum, thigh and calf muscles which are a little bit stronger and faster than the current best sprinters, they explained. The University of Bath experts suggest that the record will start to plateau at some point, and it will get harder and harder to outrun the previous record holder. However, they remain optimistic about breaking the 9-second barrier. It's safe to say that someone will break the 9-second barrier, not necessarily in our lifetime, but it will happen one day, they concluded. However, not everyone is so positive. Speaking to Mail Online, Dr. Dr. Sam Allen, a senior lecturer in biomechanics at Loughborough University, said he doubts the 100 meters will ever be completed in under 9 seconds. Based on the current rates of progression, I would say no, he said. However, obviously anything could and likely will happen in the fullness of time. There is no accounting for currently unknown factors completely shifting the goalposts. Dr. Allen believes that technological advancements could help boost the chances of breaking the nine second barrier. Undoubtedly shoes and track surfaces could improve sprint times, but by how much will depend on how much the governing bodies limit innovation in this area. He said, they have seemingly already banned prototype sprint spikes because it seemed they improved performance by too much. During the Tokyo Olympics, a super shoe allowed athletes to smash world records thanks to their carbon fiber plates and AirPod mattresses. But sports chiefs faced huge pressure to ban the high-tech footwear before the delayed games even began. The controversial issue, which has been brewing for years, was thrust into the limelight in Tokyo, with all eyes on Nike's Air Zoom Max Fly. Norway's 400 meters hurdles gold medal winner car Karsten Warholm launched a rant against Nike's bull spike technology after winning one of the greatest Olympic races of all time. He obliterated his own world record to claim gold while wearing the 170 pounds Puma Evo Speed Future Faster Plus spikes designed with the Mercedes F1 team. But Rye Benjamin from the US, wearing the 165 pounds Nike Max Fly spikes, came in a very close second and also beat the previous world record of 
46.70 seconds set by Warholm in Oslo last year. A study published by the University of Massachusetts explored new innovations in athletics, including lightweight, resilient, and compliant midsole foam, altered geometry, and increased longitudinal bending stiffness in shoes. They wanted to find a way to quantify the benefit of the new technology, but found too many confounding factors had to be considered. The team suggested it would be necessary to wait for multiple companies to offer the technology and for it to be so widely used you can track results in competition. In the end, we might just need to rely on an unbiased comparison of track performances pre and post the introduction of super spikes or, at the individual level, changes in an athlete's training or race times, the authors wrote. In several years, we can expect performance analyzes into the historical development of annual top 20 and top 50 performances similar to those currently being published for marathon super shoes. It is tempting to attribute any new world record to footwear innovation, but the long-term performance trajectories of, for example, Sidney McLaughlin and Karsten Warholm cannot be ignored, the authors said.